okay? Okay. All right. Uh, I love how you just touched your face and your snot. And <laughs> what? Okay, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You immerse the hand sanitizer. <laughs> no, it was, I have allergies. And nowadays, you can't even, like, I know. Cough. I can't even do that I without know. people, like. But you're, like, making snot gargling noises and touching your nose. Anyway, uh, the first episode is coming to you, brought to you by COVID 19. <laughs> um, but this is our podcast. This is the Steve Trevino Captain Evil podcast. It starts today. We're very excited. Very um, excited. We uh, we've been wanting to do a podcast. We, yes. Um, and then just so people know, it, it's not like we were like, oh, we should do a podcast because we have nothing else to do. <laughs> we had been planning on doing a podcast. Yes, we were yes. working on getting all the things in order, and then you know this just kind of lit a fire. Uh, under our ass, so this and is the very we're first still episode. Speaking, so we were like, okay, we can barely. Do it. <laughs> we're barely still speaking. This is a, a, a well, and and just being stuck at home and and not being able to to almost leave the house because we have taken it ninety uh, percent serious. Ninety <laughs> percent on a 90%. scale of one to ten. That's we, fair. Uh, eighty, eighty. Me more than you. Yes, you definitely more than me. But um, I, I do want to say that it, you know because it's the first episode. Yes. Because everybody knows what I do on stage. And some of you, you might be joining hopefully this. Not. Hopefully there's like new people right, right. listening in. Maybe like there's people that heard are just. about it from friends of friends. Yeah, they go, oh, I just want to hear the podcast. Yeah. And then they find out that I'm a stand-up comedian. And then they and find that out. And I'm fabulous. And, they, <laughs> and then they find <laughs> out that I spend my time talking about you. Yes. On stage and our relationship and our life. And that, that you know, me calling you Captain Evil became a thing and, and yeah. people just well, really... Well, and I think there's probably people who have, like, seen your clips on Facebook but maybe not had the opportunity to see the entire special well, or see I... you live and so they don't know the, the big picture, the whole picture. But I also think that, that people definitely become a fan of my stand-up and then I think they become a fan of our relationship and then become a fan of you. I just keep thinking of our relationship in COVID and I was like, no one should be a fan of that shit. Well, we, we definitely thought we'd be better quarantiners. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That was just where No, it's what you do. Is we're used to it. Right, I'm used true. to you interrupting. Which, I by do. the way, I'm going to bring up something later. That Okay, so for those of you that don't know, I am a... I don't, I don't, uh, I don't write anything down. I'm not much of... I plan things in my head. Oh, there's a plan. Yes. Okay. There's always a plan. <laughs> There's always a plan. And and for you, you're more of a post-it note, write things down. Diagram out the chart of the plan. Yeah, you want to like, <laughs> you spin out. So anyway, uh, in my head, I have planned a, a little something to talk about later because, you know, uh, during the quarantine, we decided to do uh, Pardon the Bitching. Are we live? No technical difficulties? <laughs> But, oh, dude, look, in front of my face is where all the comments are. And we had a lot of fun doing it. It was fun. And every week we're like, oh, man, do I have something to bitch about? And then somehow we always find, we always found it. Um, so for those of you that are that are joining the podcast and, and you're meeting um, Renee, you know, a lot of people. Oh, know, yeah, my name. It, Let's actually use my real it's name. It's funny because on stage sometimes, I, you know, I'll be like, hey, any questions? And then somebody like one person will be like, what is your wife's name? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Captain Evil. And they're like, no, like, what's your name? I'm Renee. So uh, for those of you that are meeting Renee for the first time and, and you're, you're coming to this podcast. Before I, Steve met me, um, my name was Renee. <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah, let's talk about one. We met as children. Yeah. We grew up in the same little town, Gregory, Portland, Texas. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Um, I don't think people do. And and I barely got out of high school. We went to the same high school. And uh, Renee, Captain Evil over here, was actually salutatorian. But you would have been valid Victoria. Okay, but let's just clear something up. Okay, before you get into that story, which you can continue What's to What's the girl's name that was valid Victorian? I'll call her out right now. I will call her ass <laughs> out right now. Like you did not, you're not valid Victorian. Renee was. <laughs> no, I would like to make it very clear that you and I did not go to high school together. There's a bit of an age gap. There, there. is an age gap. Just for the record. Yes, I am older yes. than you, uh, but I look better. Uh, questionable. Uh, dude, the one time you laugh, <laughs> the one time you laugh, and it wasn't even a lot. It was like, huh, really? Um, 
So yeah, we did not go. We went to the same high school. I was at actually different times, dude. I Clarify. was at your graduation. You were Cause because yeah, you, because uh, your cousin Rocky graduated. Because my cousin with you. Rocky graduated with you, and I went to the graduation. And you were so cheesy. You came out with your back then. It was the disposable cameras, and I remember your speech. I remember you're like, <laughs> "Let's just capture this moment." <laughs> Let's no. capture this moment. And dude, she pulls out it's this. It's a little creepy that you remember it. How, dude, I remember everything. You know that. Yeah, yeah. I remember the clothes you were wearing when we met and started dating. I remember the hotel What was room. I wearing? Uh, you were wearing those funky blue, green, orange pants with a white shirt. I don't uh, know. On our date, you were wearing white pants that accentuated your shitter. <laughs> because you have a very nice ass. So anyway, okay. So back to, I have known your parents my whole life. Yes. Your parents know my parents. Yes. As a matter of fact, and it's always so hard to explain this. As a matter of fact, my stepmother, who came into my life when I was about nine years old, Mm -hmm. she threw a baby shower. For my mom. For your mom. When she was pregnant. With my older brother. When she was pregnant with the older brother. So that's how far our families go back. Well, it's such a small town. Like, everyone knows everyone. I don't even necessarily know that Sarah and my mom were, like, best buds or anything. And that's why she threw her the shower. I think she was just like, Mary's having a baby. Nobody's throwing her a shower. I'll do it. Because it's just a small community. She fell back. (laughs) Because your mom has no friends. (laughs) (laughs) A little passive aggressiveness in there, Steve. From your mom all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Um... So, uh, I guess the story is, how did we end up married and together? Yeah. Um, Renee graduated, salutatorian, but should have been valedictorian. Technical issues, (laughs) right? (laughs) No, not really. You always argue that. No, it's true. The valedictorian only beat her because her elective was athletics, and she got 100 in athletics, and your uh, um, extra elective. Cr- elective was drama, and Miss Brown, Charlotte Brown, only gave you a ninety-eight. And by the time you realized that had Miss Brown given you a hundred the whole time, you would have been valid Victorian. But once I asked her and I told her that's what was going on, she happily gave me a hundred. It was too late, <laughs> too little, too late. <laughs> And now your life, your life could have been completely different. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Dramatically yeah. different. Um, so Renee, I could have been married to a trust fund baby if I'd only been valedictorian. You all, your dad wanted that. Your dad wanted that. So, And here's what's crazy is, is not only did you graduate salutatorian, should have been valedictorian, you graduated at age 17 years old. Yep. And then Renee goes off to NYU. Yeah. New York University, a little kid big, big from city. Gregory Portland High School, in, finds herself at NYU. Um, I have moved to Los Angeles to be a stand-up comedian. Um, I go home. Okay, and then we have to say that her father worked at the post office in our little town. There's only one post office in our town. Yes, one yeah. post office, and your dad always won um, most popular. Because <laughs> uh, her, her dad... Your dad is such a character, and he's so charismatic and talks to everybody, right? The cover of the Postman calendar. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I don't think it's a sexy calendar, but I moved to Los Angeles to be a comedian. You go to NYU after high school. Yes. Um, You go there, actually, to be an actor. Yeah. Because you were- I got accepted to Tisch. You got accepted to Tisch. You were the best actor in the state of Texas. I'd school. never even been to New York City. Miss Brown was just like, you got in, you got to go. So, so it's like, okay. I am opening for a certain comedian. I'm not going to name any names. I find myself cutting the yard at my grandma's house. Your dad, Mr. Popular, he rolls up. And he. I remember specifically, he was like, oh, hey, man. And, uh, you know, this summer, my daughter's going to Los Angeles. And I know you live there. She's going to be there for the summer. Here's her number. Can you look out for her? And I was like, yes. I, I knew that I would bone her. Uh, I just didn't know that <laughs> her mouth. dad would hook it up. <laughs> Shush your mouth. No, I was going out there. I was like sharing a futon with one of my gay friends who was out there for the summer. And my dad was like, what's going to happen if you get a flat tire? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, according to your dad, gay men cannot change tires, right? right? right. Uh, oh, he's gay. He doesn't know how to change a tire. Well, maybe they do, Raymond. Maybe gay men are men too. 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? I mean, if he was a lesbian, he'd be like, oh, she, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, good. She's, Renee's she's good. Got it. <laughs> um, then he'd be concerned for different reasons. Right. <laughs> so he gives me your number, and I call you, and we end up hanging out. And it, I remember thinking, wow, this girl is absolutely beautiful. And uh, I made you give me a ride. To... Well, you called me because you were going to hook me up with a friend of yours. You had like that was a all friend bullshit. and a boy. But no, you never intended no, to hook me bullshit. up with him. It was oh, all bullshit. I thought that's what you like. Come out. I have someone I want you to meet. That's what you told me. You and then like, I was I like, and then I'm going to impress you, <laughs> okay, with my mass, my massive arms and my charm. Uh, so you come out and, and we hang out that night. And then I remember you were staying with. Um, you're, you're sharing a futon, I had found yeah. out. And I said, well, I'm going on the road for the week. Instead of staying on the futon, why don't you stay in my apartment? Yes. So you stay in the apartment. I, I was Chicago. The I back went, cave. I went to Chicago. I come back. My clothes are cleaned. The house, the apartment is clean. Was it? Yes. I don't know about my that. bed is made. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the girl for me. <laughs> And that's the last time you've ever done that shit. Well, my mom said I should do something nice in return. She was talking about a blowjob. <laughs> no, Brad. <right. laughs> oh. She wasn't saying clean no. up. She was like, hey, hook him <laughs> up. Do something nice for the guy. Bullshit. <laughs> so oh, my the... mom's not listening. My poor mother. Your mom won't figure out how to, how to <laughs> download a podcast. Um, so anyway, and then... Um, we spend the summer pretty much every day together. You have to go to back to NYU. However, yes. you tell me, because now we're doing kind of a long distance thing, and you're like... I didn't want to go back. You were the one who convinced me to go and finish. You had to finish. That's what you said. You because said, nobody in your family has a degree from a four-year university. Had at the time. At that, You yeah. do now. Yeah. Okay. So you go back, uh, and we're kind of having this long distance thing. And then you're like, don't tell people from back home that we're dating. Well, because I didn't know if it was going to stick. I didn't know how long it was going to work out once you went back to your normal life on the road and I went back to school. Uh, and I agree. I mean, I, there was a chance I could still meet someone with a trust fund at NYU. So well, there's I a big chance. I wanted to keep my options open. Um, <laughs> why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> Not. So, because that's not at all the case. That's why I'm laughing. So but hard. I tell my dad. I just, I didn't, I didn't want my folks to know unless this was really something real. But I told my dad. <gasps> so we go. I, I'm, I happen to be touring in the Northeast. Yes. And I come and stay with you. Yep. And were you in DC or I don't know where you were? I think I was in DC. And my dad collects baseball hats. And back then, it was the old Yankee Stadium, the original Yankee Stadium. Yeah. We went to go see it. We couldn't get in, but they were selling baseball hats outside. So I bought a Yankee Stadium baseball hat, and I mail it to my dad. Well, I mail it to your dad. You mail it to my dad. So it was your mistake. You secretly <laughs> wanted them to know. No. Her dad works at the post office. And I screwed up and put my return address yes. on the envelope. You put your return address on the envelope. Your dad is holding the package. My dad walks into the post office and your dad asks my dad, why are you getting mail from my daughter? And then my dad goes, oh, Steve's fucking her. Grabs the package and leaves, right? And leaves. I get a phone call. But I'm still asleep. Were it's you like, really? You were asleep when he called? Well, first of all, LA's two hours earlier. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So, you know, he gets out of work at 2.30. Yeah. So he's probably calling me at 2.31, right? And it's noon and I'm a comedian. Yeah. He calls me up. He's pissed. He's like, what? how can you do this to me? And I can't believe you did this to me. I'm like, I did it to her. Really, I did a lot of things <laughs> to her. Stop. I didn't say that. I just told her. I said, I, said, oh my gosh. I said, Raymond, I didn't plan on this to happen. We didn't plan on it to happen, but it's real. It's You happening. didn't plan on it. You told me you were setting me up with your friend. You planned it the whole time. And I gave you the old. <laughs> so then uh, <laughs> your, your dad, your dad, uh, I'm doing Austin. I'm performing in Austin. And well, we my, so no, you got to say my dad. Oh yeah, dude, he gets, you, for, you forgot the biggest part of it. My dad literally loses his shit and gets Bell's palsy that day. Yeah, 
that day. Yeah. Right? Very half of his sh- very face. Very shortly after calling you. Half of his and face. And losing his mind, my father gets Bell's palsy. Face numb. Half the face. It's, yes, face paralysis on the half of your face. The first time that I meet your parents as a couple, your dad's face is completely well, numb. Well, because what you're saying is you were performing in Austin, and so we decided I should fly in from... You're coming in from L.A., I should come in from New York, and it's a good place to kind of meet my parents in person and have and an honest what's discussion right. about but what's I've been going on with us. That I've been giving you the... <laughs> old. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we... After you graduate college, NYU, you decide to move to Los Angeles, and at some point, we a couple years into that, I think, we decide to move in together... Yeah. We move in together. Who gets Bell's palsy? You do, sir. I get Bell's palsy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh because it was really traumatic. It was sad. When, we're laughing now, but it was no. really sad when my dad got it. And it was sad. I just when remember you got your it too. dad calling Not me. Not as sad, but still sad. Your dad calling me and laughing at me because <laughs> he's like, ha, ah, that's what you get. And I'm like, wait a minute, Raymond. Okay. There's one woman that we both love. What have we learned? <laughs> that bitch gives men Bell's palsy. It's you, dude. It's you. Uh, and so Captain Evil was born. Which, by the way... <laughs> That's my superpower. Yeah, your superpower <laughs> is to give people Bell's palsy. So anyway, uh, my wife, as you can see if you're watching this uh, on video, my wife is very attractive, or at least I think so. You might not think so, but I think so. And sometimes other men think so too. And you, she gets hit on. Where are you and, going and with this? People are like, Steve, are you worried that you know your wife's attractive and you're not and, and guys hit on her? I'm like, no, because they're gonna bring her back. <laughs> they're gonna get Bell's palsy, they're gonna be fucking broke, and they're gonna bring her back. <laughs> Me and you belong together. I'm the only one that can put up with your shit. And I'm the only one who can put up with yours. But here we are after gosh, uh, we've been together a very long time. And now, for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, how is it with Steve's in-laws? We have a great relationship. Me and your dad are are, uh, very similar. Like, let's get into that. Well, the therapy of that, I sure did marry my dad, didn't I? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Let's psychoanalyze Captain Evil. Well, no, but you're kind of like, it is kind of weird that me and your dad are very, very similar people. You are. We can't sit still. Yeah. We're always working. You're we're both always, loud. We're both loud. We both like to be the life of the party. We both like to gamble. Yeah. We both like to drink. Yep. You know, like, I mean, we're very similar. Both very hardworking. Did you already say that one? Yep. When I grow my hair out, I get curls. <laughs> Your dad has a perma perm. <laughs> Definitely has a perm. Dude, he has like the, like the, uh, the you know, like when you wear the hat and the per- the mullet just comes out the back. That's her Which dad. is so weird. That our son right. didn't come out with curly hair. Like what? I totally thought he. That is weird. Curly yeah, because your dad has curly, curly hair. hair. I have curly do. hair. You kind of have. I do have wavy you know, hair. I do like your hair when you leave it. Curly. Uh, curly. So that that is kind of the story of us. Well, you know, and and in the beginning, in the in the beginning, you know, when I started talking about you on stage, your parents were not that into it. Well, no, because you would do a joke about us having sex and the dog throwing up in the corner of the room. Like, I still love that joke. And, what mom and dad I wants still, to hear that story. I still love that joke. <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> I miss our dog. I do too. Oh, man. Again, quarantine we, really makes me want a puppy. I know. But then we're going to go back to regular life and that poor puppy's going to... Well, gonna, one can hope. Yeah, well, that's what we're hoping. And, and you know, I would say we will, that, we will. that me and you have a very good relationship. We like to laugh. Yeah. We like to hang out. Yeah. We both uh, both love each other very much. Uh, we both love being Garrett's parents. Uh, but quarantine has been freaking rough. Yeah. I just think it's the it's the. Um, it just the, it's start it's starting to feel like Groundhog Day, like well, legit it's, it, Groundhog right, Day. Right, and it's the disruption in something that we were very used to. I mean. For those of you that don't know, I, I've never, since I was 18 years old, I've been doing stand-up comedy. I started stand-up comedy. I moved to Dallas, Texas when I was uh, uh, 19 years old to pursue my career in stand-up. And by the time I was 20 or 21, I was on the road full-time. So now, 20 years of my life, 
I have been on the road almost every single weekend because I am a workaholic. Yeah. Almost every single weekend for the past 20 years. And then it wasn't like me and you met and then I started going on the road. It's always been... The dynamic of our relationship. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, know, we, how we function. We do travel a lot together as a family and we function well when we're traveling as a family. Yeah. Um, we have our routines, right? Yeah. You know that... Um, Usually Saturday morning, I need to sleep to at least nine. Yeah. Right. And then you go do, you know, whatever morning activity with. You're just with, a grump when uh, you're not on the road. I know, dude. And, and it's, it's, it's me learning that me being on stage is such a big part of my life. Uh, psychologically. Yeah. Like psychologically, I need. Let's psychoanalyze you. You need the audience. I do. I you need, need the, the audience. You need the applause and the laughter. I, need, well, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's the applause and the laughter, or is it my ability to go on stage and 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 bitch about us? So it's marital therapy. No, our our, our talk <laughs> unfucking interrupted. <laughs> Where I get to talk, where I get to talk, and I'm not interrupted by there's Captain Evil, or you know, if I go in a certain direction, there's nobody going, "Hey, change that story, say it like no this." No one to call your bullshit. Right. <laughs> I can do what I want, and then it's it's my own. I I love doing stand up, yeah. and I never got into stand up for fame and fortune. I've been doing stand-up since I was a child. Second grade talent show, I'm on stage. I love being a stand-up comedian. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I guess there's also that fear that, oh my God, is it being taken away? Are we ever going to get back to normal? Are we ever going to get to a place where we can all sit in a room together? Right. What, when, what is that return going to look like? Like, we just don't know. We don't, we don't know how it's going to play out. We don't. I mean, Taylor Swift has canceled her tour through the end of the year. I know that's like a different level, but but just to say. <laughs> Dude, seriously? You know, Taylor Swift, Steve, she's on another level. I mean, yes, she is. Yes, I would agree that she is, but that was kind of shitty. Okay. I mean, the way you said it hurt my feelings a little bit. I mean, Taylor Swift, I mean, Carrot Top, I mean, she's on another level. How dare you? I did not say Carrot Top. No, but Carrot Top's very talented. I, I don't, he's, we always make fun of Carrot Top, uh, but he's very talented and funny. Um, but it, it, but it's, I, it's also, I do like to be on the go. I do like to move. I do like to, to um, you know, be in Vegas and, you know, I, I like it. That's what's scary too. It. Vegas is your favorite city and it's like shut down completely. And that's it's your crazy, favorite. Dude. I feel like you just keep posting pictures on Instagram of but, Vegas and Vegas memories. But like, going back to you, like here you had this dream of being a, a an actor, right? Uh -huh. And then now all of a sudden you're this character in a stand-up comedian's life. It was weird at first. Why? Well, because obviously the stories are told from your point of view, right? Which is exaggerated. The point of view. <laughs> which is exaggerated but true. for the purpose of but humor. But true. Rooted in some sort of truth. 90%. Yes. Well, I think I might beg to differ. But, but my point is that I felt like people were so identifying with this character that I wasn't sure I completely embodied, if that makes sense. Well, I, you know, and, and it's... It, but it you do. Like a, it felt like a skewed version you are, of me. You are definitely a certain kind of woman. There's the women. Oh my god, I don't know what that means. No, no. There's the women like my sister who are who are all about comfort and being a mom and you I'm know, about being a mom. No, no, but no, no. Hold on. But you see my sister and she's in Adidas tennis shoes. She doesn't she's in dress jeans. differently than I do. She's yes. in jeans. She's in a t-shirt. Right. Sometimes it's a you know, cheer mom t-shirt. You, you don't leave the house. Like, people are looking at my wife right now going, oh my God, she dressed up for the podcast. I did. No, Do you this is just... you every day. No, but I just realized uh, this was the last in-store retail purchase I made. This headband and these earrings. I should have I should have spent more on that shopping trip is what I'm saying. My wife does not leave the house <laughs> underdressed. They will never catch you in jeans or yoga pants and, a ten and tennis shoes unless you're going to work out. And even when you work out, your shit has to match. 
Yes. So you are definitely that kind of woman. And I think that other women are like you and they identify with, oh my God, she's a pain in the ass. So am I. Oh my God. She's married to an average dude who loves her, who kills himself to give her all the things that she wants. So am I. Oh, I was going to say, I was about to say, so wearing matching clothes makes you a pain in the ass? Like, no, well, I mean, <laughs> yes, because. <laughs> because you wear the same five shirts. Yeah, and it takes me two minutes to walk out of the house. And you're a pain in the ass because I need my time. Which, by the way, it always cracks me up that you're like, I'm a feminist. I'm like, no, dude, you're not a feminist. But it's like, you know, I want us to be equals. Uh, you cut the yard. That's a man's job. Uh, I want to be equals. Uh, you take okay. out the trash. While we're That's talking a man's about this, job. Right. No. Okay. So usually you take out the trash and I put in the bag, right? Like we know that between right. the two Trash of us. man, bag lady. Okay. Yes, there's a joke. It has been how many weeks in quarantine? You have not changed a single roll of toilet paper. Yes, I have. No, no. You, oh, okay. Well, you will take it out of the cupboard and you will sit it on top of the holder. Okay, you know why I did that? You've so done you're that not like even two thinking. or three times. How I did. Hard, how much more effort does I it did. take to like pull the thing off and put the roll I on I 1,000% the thing? did because, and you haven't even noticed, the roll was too fat. They started throwing out quarantine rolls. <laughs> and, the, and the quarantine rolls are real fat. And when I tried to put it in there, it didn't fit. So I had to put it on so that we can use a little bit of it and then finally, when it's thin enough to get in the thing, you put it in. Okay. Okay? So that's what happened. Quarantine rolls. Put that on Quar- the paper. Quarantine rolls. Put that on the... Uh, Steve yeah. Trevino made that up. <laughs> so. Uh. Oh, and then, and then you know, what's interesting, too, is is people are always... Another reason we're doing the podcast uh-huh. is because people are always like, how do you write your material? How do you write your jokes? Where does your material come from? So it comes from several... Me doing dumb shit. Well, and, well, yes, but it also comes from it comes from observing, like me watching people, yeah. watching couples, right? So, you know, like the Vegas story, you know, of of me and the free range titties and all that was a combination of things that I've done, things that you've done, and then what happened to Jen and Jeremy. Yeah. Right. So I was able to like observe what happened between Jen and Jeremy, take the stories that happened between us, and then to make you a know, mishmash. So right. see, it's not all exactly me. That's what I mean. So when Captain, when people are like, "Oh, Captain Evil," it's but, not all me. But a lot of it is, and a lot of it. And I always tell people that that my material now, I always try to start number one with a real place. Yeah. And number two, what is the emotion of that joke? Right. How does that joke? How does that joke make us feel? Then I make it funny. Yeah. Then I go, okay, this really happened. This is the emotion of that joke and the real fight of that joke. And then here's me trying to make things as funny as possible. Yeah. Right. However, I mean, look, I. I, uh, And I think it's gotten more specific in in the course of our relationship together. So, like, for example, you know, this weekend we had. family members over for um, uh, just to hang out, right, briefly. And, and my cousin Abel have comes. Have dinner. Right, have dinner. My cousin Abel comes to hang out. And by the way, I was like so happy. You know, here we are two months into quarantine. I'm like, fuck, I haven't written a joke. And people are like, oh, you're going to have so many jokes about the quarantine? I'm like, no, we don't do shit. <laughs> Nothing's happening. It's the same day every fucking day. So Abel and Gloria come over. And they have a 14-month-old little girl, beautiful little girl. So cute. And um, Abel is sitting down, and me and Abel, and Abel likes to talk politics. So Abel's talking politics with me. And I know, I went into the house real quick. I said, uh-oh, oh, they're talking politics. Yeah, a- Abel, like, Abel's done. real, real uh, uh, politic guy. So, But I don't mind chatting up with him because he's very intelligent and, and uh, he's interesting to talk to. However, uh, the 14-month-old has just started to walk. So she's she, all over the place. She is at the point where, and I think a lot of parents are like, I just want my baby to start walking. And then your baby starts walking. You're like, oh my God, it doesn't sit down. Right? It doesn't sit yeah, down. It doesn't sit down. He or she doesn't <laughs> sit down. So uh, little Camila is like walking around and Gloria is her shadow. Gloria's behind her. Um, me and Abel are having a, a, a drink and talking politics. And then Abel goes, uh, hey, Gloria, 
uh, you want me to help you? And then she goes, no, I'm fine, right? And he's like, okay, 30 minutes goes by, we're another drink in, and, she, and Abel again. Uh, now we're eating, now the food's been served, and Abel goes, hey, I've already eaten, do you wanna sit down and eat, and I'll take Camila? And then she goes, no, right? And then, uh, at the end of it all, I told Gloria, I said, Gloria, I said, uh, we haven't talked in forever, I would have loved for us to have a conversation, I wish, you know, you were chasing your baby around. She goes, yeah, because Abel doesn't do shit. <laughs> I don't think she said and then, it like that. And then I'm Gloria like. Gloria does not sound like that for the record. And, and, well, she didn't say shit, but she was like, well, I've done it. I, you know, I've been following Camila around. Abel doesn't do anything. And I'm like, bitch, he offered. I heard him offer twice. So from that. Did he set his drink down? There was nothing. Did he get Hold his on. butt up off the chair and volunteer to help? There was Did nothing. Did he go make his wife a plate of food? There was nothing funny about that in the moment. However, I'm going to write a joke because you're the same way. <laughs> because I realized that how many times are you like, you're going to clean the kitchen? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to clean the kitchen. And then you're like, you know what? I'll just do it. And then you do it. And then later that night, you're upset with me. And I'm like, wait a minute, why are you upset? Well, because I had to clean the kitchen. Wait a minute, jerk. I told you I would do it. So that is a good example of where me observing some, somebody else doing something. Uh -huh. So what you're saying is this is going to turn into something funny? It's a bit. Yes, it's going to be a great bit that I was able to grab onto. Then later that night, what happens? So... I don't know. What happened? We like to play a game called Farkle. And if you don't know the game, it's a, you know, we sit around, we, we hang out with other couples, we drink. It's a very mindless, easy game. Six dice. That's Six it. dice. And it's called Farkle. And um, another friend of ours, Ponch and Kiki, were there with their kid, Jack. And Jack goes, I want to play. So then I go, oh, I'm going to explain. About. I'm going to explain to you how the game works. I start explaining the game, okay? I'm not even close to being done. And then Renee goes, Captain Evil goes, oh, you're, you're explaining it wrong. No, Let me explain. You I don't know how to explain. The way you're explaining, he's not going to get it. So I then, would never say in front of him that he's not going to get it. But poor kid, I could see the look of confusion on his face I was, I when was your ADD brain is like jumping around explaining one role and a different role. I had just said one thing and you're like, oh no, let me explain. And then, so then you start explaining and Slower, he's looking at you. step by step so that he can understand, what showing him with examples, with the dice. How do you know I wasn't going to do that? Because that's not what you were doing. I had just started. And what we're learning is. I'm right and you're wrong. That your way is the only way. It's better. So that's going to be a bit. <laughs> The fact that you are so arrogant <laughs> that you think I'm that, arrogant. that I was not going to be able to explain to him how the game works. It takes a certain amount of ego to get up there on stage and talk about how you're so much better than your wife. Yes. Yes. It does. And you're calling me arrogant. And I feel like that's the pot calling the kettle ego, black. It takes a certain amount of ego <laughs> that goes, no, no, no. This guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> let me... Let, <laughs> like that. Let me explain to you the right way <laughs> on how to play this game. Which, by the way, I have explained that game to several other couples my way and somehow we end up playing. So then, here's an even funnier part that helps me with that bit is I'm now giving her shit because like she'll get Farkle and I'll be like, well, from the person that that is explaining can't even play the game right and then Renee's getting annoyed. Renee's like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, that's annoying. And I'm like, wait a minute. You completely <laughs> taking over me explaining is not annoying. And then now that I'm be I'm explaining to you that that what you did to me was annoying, now I'm annoying? All right, Steve Trevino, you're annoying. Time to go on the road. <laughs> so So that is how Time to go back to work. You're that annoying. is how material gets written. <laughs> by observing, by living it, by watching it and then creating the story behind it, right? And then sometimes I'll take, I'll take that scenario and maybe it won't be Farkle. 
maybe I'll find something else. That's a little more relatable that everyone knows. Maybe, right? I, I, I mean, you know me. I walk on stage and I tell the story. And then from there, I just keep telling it. I think just that's keeps... what's been challenging is that, you know, when people are saying, oh, you must be writing so many funny things, is that you don't write in the sense that you don't physically take pen to paper and write things down. You work it out live on stage. And you haven't even had the ability to, like, on stage. these funny yeah. things that have happened, you haven't even had the ability to go and test them out. And oh, yeah, that's what I love. how they're going to, like, transform. And right? Progress. I love that something happens, and then either that day or the next day, I'm already on stage talking about it. Um, yeah. and, and then for me, the, the, big, the big switch for me, uh, stand-up-wise, and I, I tell people all the time, like, and I hate the fact that that, that album is on there, I hated you for making me fall in love with you. I did, dude, I, bro, I, like, my life was great, right? I'm 20 something years old. I'm on the road every single week from city to city. I'm a freaking pirate. I'm drinking, I'm crushing, right? Life's great. Then this woman comes into my life who I absolutely love, who is now making, living, making me change my life. And my standup was angry and it was mad and it was, I hated you for it. <laughs> and I hated that I was making this transition from single guy into this guy that I thought I didn't want to be. And then after that album, once- You were 26. You don't feel like you were really, 26, when we met, yeah, yeah, you don't I feel like you were really ready for a serious relationship at 26, 27? No, not, not I mean, I was putting up numbers. No, he's shaking his head. I was putting up numbers, you know, life was good. Um, <laughs> So my stand-up was really angry. So that was kind of the, the switch, right? And then, and then when I, I got to the point where I was like, hey, I'm okay being this guy. And I am madly in love with this girl. And when, and then when, when the love for you came out in my stand-up yeah. is when it changed. And when people were like, I understand his frustration, but I also see how much he loves his wife. You know what I mean? And then the big joke for me that really... Because your fan base is very female, Steve Trevino. Don't you ever forget that. But they're female. Put that on a shirt. But you know why they're female? Why? Because uh, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. Interesting. Because I imitate you. Uh -huh. And it's because I love you. And it's because I, you know, I'm very flattered by you, right? Sa same way when I would imitate my dad, right? I, I admire my dad uh -huh. very, very much. Or my mom. or You know what I mean? So... Imitation is the biggest form of flattery. So when they see me making fun of you and imitating you. You talk shit about you know, me because you love me so much. Yes. <laughs> but the big joke that changed that uh -huh. was the toothpaste. I remember walking on stage. That was like stage. the turning point, the toothpaste? Dude, I remember walking on stage. I guess so. That makes sense. And I was pissed because I had just finished asking you not to do it anymore. I was like, dude, can you please... Roll the toothpaste. Don't squeeze it from the middle. You don't even put the cap back on. So and the then, fact that you would even care about and that. And then I remembered the next day, you were like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? Where she was like, and I asked her with heart, like, hey, this really fucks me up. You know what I mean? Can you please not do it? And then the next day you're like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck this guy. And then I remember walking on stage going, what kind of animal? squeezes the toothpaste <laughs> from the middle and everybody died laughing. And I, I have found those throughout my stand-up, right? Like the trash. Yeah. Right? Where I'm like, trash man, you know, uh, bag lady. Yeah. To where it was these little nuggets that people go, oh my God, that's us. How did he know that? Because we live it. Because we live it. And it's real. And it's honest. So that's, that is what... We hope that this podcast will be I, I, <laughs> another opportunity for us to bitch about each other. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Well, no, but I, I also want to give people the insight, right? I want them to to meet you, right? I, and yeah. and and it's funny when we get people that go, "Oh my God, you guys are our relationships goals." I'm like, "Well, your goals are pretty shitty." <laughs> you know, let's could, raise the bar because we fight, because we have our issues, because. Uh, we're not perfect parents because we thought we were going to be better at quarantining and we're not. Yeah. Um, so that's what this podcast is. This podcast is here's two people who love each other, who I get to take that material on stage. You get to see that 
And then you get to hear us having real life conversations. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And then I think there's stuff that's just, we'll never make it on stage, right? That's like, it's not meant to be told in that venue, but it's cool to have this platform to get to oh, talk yeah, about those right? things. Oh yeah, right? Like I can go off on whatever and we can talk about it without going, okay, is that a bit? Is it not a bit? Yeah. Is it going to go on stage? And you know, hopefully people tune in. However... But didn't we say we also, on future episodes, we want to have other couples come on we too do. and do stuff like that? Yeah, I'd like to have yeah. a relationship specialist on the episode maybe. Uh-oh. Um, I would like to have other couples join us. I would like to have um, I'd love some to have famous other couples, couples. Yeah, I'd love to have other couples that work together because you and I work together on projects and stuff other like couples that. And that I've work always together. been so interested on the dynamics of other couples that work together too. And in the beginning of my stand-up career, there were so many comics that I admired. And, and now that, that I've moved on in my career, I admire the stand-ups that um, are married, that have kids, Right? How and, do you do it with a family? You know, people like Ray Romano. And, or like and Jim Gaffigan. That Jim dude's Gaffigan. got like five kids and he and his um, wife work together. Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, Larry the Cable Guy. I mean, all these guys that... Adam Sandler. All these guys that have been able to have this career and yet... Make a family work. Make a family work. And, and you know, people like that I would love to talk to and kind of get, you know, how it works for them, you know, specifically. And, and people like, you know, Jeff Foxworthy who they don't live in... Hollywood. They don't live in L.A. They don't live in New York City. They live in in Georgia. Yeah. You know, Larry I, the Cable I think, Guy. I don't you know. know. I think after all this quarantine stuff, that's that's going to change and shift things too. Absolutely. You know? So, I mean, that's kind of the goal for the podcast. And uh, my wife and I would like to ask you guys that if, if you're into it, if you listen to it, please share it. Please like it. Please review it. Oh, share it with people who might not know about Steve Trevino. Um, new, new folks. Because uh, uh, without you guys, there is no us. Um, sure. And I also want them to follow you on Instagram because I think that your Instagram is a lot more personal than I am. Than oh, I love Instagram. Um, so what is your Instagram? I am I am Renee with an A. She's a complicated woman. <laughs> She's a pain in the ass. Even, even is that my not, name is She so could have just been like, uh, Renee, feminist, Steve's <laughs> wife. She could have just put that, fake feminist. <laughs> Fake feminist, you're such a um, jerk. So please follow Renee. I am Mr. Steve Trevino on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Um, but please, more importantly, in order for this podcast to be successful, yeah, people uh, gotta listen. You gotta listen. You gotta share it. You gotta tell people about it. You gotta review it, uh, and then send us topics. We'd also like to set up a situation where we do it. We let you know that we're doing it. Yeah. And then you guys call in with your questions. Or kind of like your, Pardon the Bitching. People send like suggestions yeah. for when we did Pardon the Bitching. So um, that is our first episode. We, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, and forgive us if, if it's not always funny. Sometimes it's personal. Right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Um, so we love you guys. Uh, this is Steve Trevino and the Captain Evil Podcast. We will see you next week. First episode out. <laughs>